I am very happy to participate in the 5th Remembrance Day of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam being organized by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam International Foundation founded by his elder brother Haji APJM Marakair from the House of Kalam. Everybody knows how great he was as a technologist, as a motivator, as a project manager, as a visionary and above all as the people's president. My relationship with him was more intimate and very personal in nature. Hence, I will touch upon his human side. In Dr. Kalam's death, I have lost a mother, a father and a great mentor. His affection towards me and my family is only paralleled by that of my parents. He was there for us on every joyous occasion, be it my son's wedding, be it the birth of my granddaughter, be it her first birthday, or be it my Shashtyapta Purti, or be it my felicitation function a few days before his death on the eve of my retirement. His affection extended beyond my family to everyone in my circle, my students, my colleagues, and my friends. He had a very intimate knowledge of all my students' research work and their personal details. His passion was always to encourage students to work on nationally relevant technologies and be Indian and in everything they do. A great leader indeed. The ease with which my students discussed their work with Dr. Kalam showed his versatility and extremely great spectrum of knowledge. Dr. Kalam is a voracious reader. He read all the books that he could lay his hands on. Dr. Kalam learnt compassion from his mother and strict discipline from his elder brother who was nearly 16 years older to him. His father set an example for him to follow and practice religious tolerance and societal integration. The recipe was for success was well ingrained in him at this very initial stage of his life through the teachers and family. On the personal side, he was a very affectionate person and always inquired about the personal side of people, about their health and their family. He was perfect, perhaps the most gracious of hosts. In the midst of many of his commitments, he would always go the extra mile to show his concern for your near and dear ones. While describing Dr. Kalam, it would be difficult for anyone to control their emotions. During one of his visits to my laboratory, he was quick to notice the sadness in my face. He asked me for the reason. I told him that one of my students died in an accident and his father was injured and was in the hospital. I knew that he had a very busy schedule on that day. Nevertheless, he made it a point to visit my student's father in the hospital and spoke to him comfortingly. On another occasion, while he was in the Madras University, we had planned to go to a restaurant for dinner. I had invited few of my friends and relatives to join us. In the last minute, one of my friends called and conveyed her apologies for not coming since her husband had to be taken to the hospital for an emergency. Next morning, Dr. Kalam told me that we should go and visit my friend's husband and we did. I was amazed at the human side of this great person. My friend's husband recovered so rapidly and was touched by Dr. Kalam's personality. Incidences such as the ones above are neither isolated nor have been only reserved for a chosen few. I personally know many people who have had similar experiences with Dr. Kalam. Dr. Kalam may have been the person who delivered the most lectures and interacted with the greatest number of people from all walks of life. Each of, visits, each of his visits will have at least eight to nine engagements. Personally, we have seen that for every lecture, he used to prepare well, spending almost five to eight hours 
on each lecture. Whenever he addressed a technical or scientific group or conference, he would study the subject in depth, depth speak to experts known to him and meticulously come up with a set of recommendations for the future of research in that area. He would stand like a scientist working for many years in that area and everyone who attended the conference went home with the satisfaction of having spoken to one of their peers. While he was a great lecturer, he was perhaps the best in his interaction and extempore answers. His lectures always had a message. He used simple and short sentences that made him reasonable and resonate with the youth. He seldom used negative adjectives. Dr. Kalam never ever criticized anyone or any ideas in his talks or lectures or in person. He was emanating positivity in thoughts and words. His lecture at the European Union Parliament was considered by all European leaders as visionary and thought-provoking and is talked about highly even today amongst the European Union leaders. With these attributes, he could give India a vision to become a developed nation and gave hope to a billion people and the nation a goal. Dr. Kalham was perhaps the most photographed with individual. When some of us think that we know Dr. Kalam very well and we are very close to Dr. Kalam, we soon realize there are almost a billion people who also think so and have photographs with him to show as proof. Immediately following his death, Facebook witnessed the largest FIL ever profile change, profile picture change, with every one of his followers putting up photographs of theirs with Dr. Kalam. He was by far the most celebrated Indian. Once a well-known politician who was an admirer of Dr. Kalam told me Dr. Kalam must be the reincarnation of God. She said one could be good to all the people sometime. One can be good to some people all the time. How can he be good to all the people all the time if he is not God's reincarnation? In his death, most of us in the academia have lost a colleague and a friend. Every Indian who had lost a guide, a savior of the country and the whole world lost a great human being. There is one in a quadrillion chance that God would create another Dr. Kalam within the next million years. He was a mother, father, brother, teacher, friend and guide all rolled into one. We will miss him for years to come.